obviously got the best spot of the day because everyone's happy and lighthearted. And we're going to talk about holograms, right? So I'm Lorraine Bardeen. I work at Microsoft. I've worked at Microsoft for like 100 years. And a few years ago, I was lucky enough to start working on this secret tiny little baby project called HoloLens. It wasn't called HoloLens yet. It was this tiny little baby secret project. And a few years ago, my four kids were also little and cute and squishy and, and delightful. And now the curious thing is, fast forward a few years, and from my point of view, HoloLens and mixed reality computing has gotten simple and straightforward and clear. And the, the four kids have gone the exact opposite direction. <laughs> so much more complicated. So today I wanted to take, like, 10 minutes is so hard to, for me with my passion for the space. And I'm just going to try to give you an overview of mixed reality, what, what I mean when I say that. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Microsoft HoloLens and how it works. What are the components that make this all happen? And then I'm going to give you some examples of what people are doing right now, because HoloLens started shipping almost a year ago. And so the filter I used for the examples I brought for you today, I only brought things that I've either used myself or tried out in HoloLens this week, or I've talked to someone about this week. And the reason I used that filter is because I want to share that this, this road, this ubiquitous world of mixed reality computing where all computing happens in our real world, that's a lot closer than we think. And that's why I use that filter. So you just hear about what, what's going on this week. OK, so mixed reality. I like to start by saying we got these two worlds. We have physical reality. Physical reality is our real world. We get it. It's made up of atoms. And it follows the laws of physics. And then we've got virtual reality. Virtual reality has been around for a long time. Most people understand it. It's made out of bits. And it follows the laws of software logic. And these are two very different worlds. They have different ingredients, and they follow different laws. So then we talk about mixed reality. Mixed reality is when you, we blend these two together, and we try to bring the best of both of these worlds, both of these realities together. We bring the, the wonder and, and our deep understanding of the real world together with the, the dynamism and the innovation possible with software and with virtual content, people, places, and things. And now, mixed reality is really a spectrum or a continuum. Like, over here, you might be sitting in your normal room, and you might bring in a few pieces of virtual content or a virtual person to talk to. And then over here, you might be really immersed in a virtual environment. This is also mixed reality if, as long as you're aware of the real world and bring that real world into the experience. So I could talk more about it, but let me show you a couple pictures. Here we have a woman with an amazing gold-plated HoloLens on her head. Now, this is not a product announcement, although I sort of wish it were, because it's beautiful. So she's sitting in her office. And this is a mixed reality experience you see right here. She's sitting in her office, and a colleague walks into the room. And in this case, that colleague is a virtual representation of himself. And he's walking in as an avatar. And the avatar is not on a screen or... or um, on a screen on the wall, that avatar is able to navigate the real world. That's world understanding and world awareness. And then she has some content up on the walls. Maybe she's watching a film, or, or she's got a browser up on the wall, she's doing some research, and she has some, some digital sculptures on her desk. This is a mixed reality experience right here, where you're blending the virtual and the physical worlds. Now, what if they say, hey, let's, let's take this meeting somewhere else. We want to go do some research on an archaeological dig we were talking about. Let's hold this meeting there so we can really feel immersed. So this is also a mixed reality experience, where now the place is virtual. We've got a virtual person. We've got virtual things. But we've also brought real world awareness in. She can put things down on her real desk, her physical desk in the physical world. These are examples of this mixed reality spectrum. OK, so what's Microsoft HoloLens, and how does it fit into this? So Microsoft HoloLens is a self-contained, untethered Windows 10 computer. It just happens to have a little bit of functionality that many other Windows 10 computers don't have. So I'm going to break down a few of the components. First here are the sensors. These sensors face out. There's a lot of different sensors, and I could spend an hour talking just about the sensors. But what they enable HoloLens to do is see and experience the real world. What HoloLens is doing is it's tracking and mapping the real world real time by itself. We call that spatial mapping. And this means that any program that's running on HoloLens, running on this Windows 10 computer, can take advantage of the real world as a surface. 
as a place to express that program. It also means these sensors facing out means that you can use really natural input to interact with the computer and with all the programs. You can use gaze, which means where you look, what you're interested in. You can use gestures, and you can use voice. So then, as I mentioned, HoloLens has see-through lenses. This is really important to us. We really believe that the real world is, is key to sort of humanity. And, and so you can see the real world, and you can see people in the real world with you. It means you can bring all of these things that are important to you into the real world as holograms, but you don't have to include the real world. You can see it and you can interact with people. This baby here is the holographic processing unit. And that's taking reams of rich data from all of these sensors and from what you're doing, where you're moving, what you're looking at. And it's processing them and enabling you to perceive all of this content in the real, real world as holograms. We call them world-locked holograms, and this is important. This means that what you place somewhere, it stays there. And it acts a lot like a real object. If you turn your head really fast and look back, it'll still be there. If you run around in circles for an hour and stop, it'll still be there. If you put your HoloLens down and go out for dinner and have a lovely time and come back three hours later, everything you were working on will still be there just as it was. Your movie will be paused or your industrial design project will be sitting right there where it was. And that's really important to enabling holograms to act like real objects. And then finally, spatial sound. Spatial sound enables you to place audio files on the holograms wherever they are in the real world. This is really important for a lot of scenarios. I have a couple examples at the end. So I wanted to give you a couple examples, like I said, just things going on right now this week. Case Western Reserve University. Right now, they are teaching students in multiple disciplines across the school because they're, they're teaching students where learning in 3D is more effective than learning in 2D. And that's so many disciplines, it's really amazed me. So, Here's an example. It's not the best quality picture for the big screen because this was all captured through the HoloLens and we just took a freeze frame. They sent it to me uh, yesterday. So here what they're doing is learning anatomy. These are medical students learning anatomy this week using HoloLens. There's 40 of them in this room and they're all working through their anatomy curriculum. And their learning outcomes are ex so much accelerated because they're learning in three dimensions, which is how humans see and experience the world. And I've got a couple of these Brady Bunch pictures so I can tell you about some of the students. <laughs> so, Jacob up there, Jacob is about to graduate in physics. And he just did a physics class. I have a couple of videos on my phone from this morning of one of the physics classes. And he said, I've been studying, I'm, I'm supposed to be an expert in these forces, and I didn't understand some of these forces until I saw them in 3D. And then I got it. And it's like this light switch clicked on and it made sense to him. And then, and then Daniel and Emma here, they're, a, they're computer science students. And they worked on a project together that's just finishing right now. It enables musicians at the school, or mu musicians anywhere, um, who actually like using their hands for their instruments and don't like having to stop and turn music pages to keep their hands on their trumpet or whatever they're playing and watch their music score just float past their eyes exactly timed to the music. And that's just an app they made this semester in their computer science program. And then Haley, who has interned with uh, our HoloLens team, she's working with the psychology department at Case Western, working on therapeutic apps and experiences for folks who are dealing with depression. She's doing some really interesting work now. And I, I didn't bring any videos, really, because if I start bringing videos, I'll go on forever. Um, but I couldn't help but bring this one little clip from a computer science student, again, that they just said across from me this week. You know, you're no longer programming for a computer. You're programming for reality. That's it. You're programming, <laughs> you're programming for reality. But I, I could say it all day long. You know, when he says it, and he's, he's just, this is going to be his life. This is what he's going to go out and do in this world. And I, I've heard the same thing from all of those students. So speaking of students, let's talk about art students for a minute. Now, students are by definition amazing, because they're out there to learn and to soak up what the world has to offer. Art students, amazing. And, and these art students, these are four of the art students we worked with, um, when their professor said, hey, what do you guys think about doing your senior art project using holographic technology, which none of them had ever heard of? They're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't see why not. And so they all created these astounding art pieces 
uh, from multiple different disciplines. You can see here we have dance and design and theater. What did they do? Some of them created sculptures, and some of them were very familiar with 3D design, but then they optimized them for mixed reality, where you can see the real world, but then you can place your sculpture into it, and, and it's almost like a hidden object, a hidden secret. When people put the HoloLens on, they can see it. When they take it off, they can't. And that's very playful and interesting for these students. Some of them captured themselves in full holographic video as dancers, and then they were able to show those dances in the gallery opening, which I'll show you in a second. And these two young men created a theater performance specifically to watch in, in mixed reality. And then we had the first ever holographic gallery opening, which has been one of my dreams for multiple years. It was just like I imagined, like you walked in and it was silent, and there was beautiful music, and there was wine and cheese, and there was nothing. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing in there. And then you pick up a HoloLens, and then all of a sudden, art is all over the place. There's sculpture, there's dance, there's typography sculpture, so many amazing things. And a few other examples, like I said, I could easily go on for four hours, but this is just from this week. So just this week, some interns uh, made a few changes and updates to a project they were working on this summer, where they were trying to just touch on that moment where you walk in a party. And what if you walk into a big party and you can't hear anything? Well, they created this app that just shows exactly where all the sound is, the, the music, what it feels like, and, and the beat, and the tone of the music, and where is the conversation loudest, and where is it quietest? And it's just a beautiful and, and exciting uh, example of, of what you can do with, with mixed reality computing. And then NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, this week, like every week, they're just flat out driving the rover using, using HoloLens. That's what they do. Like I mentioned, Haley is working on a project, and, and I've heard from many other universities around the world who are looking at therapeutic uses of mixed reality technology. A man in Scandinavia, he was worried about his friend uh, who can't see, who's blind. And his friend has no problem navigating the real world, none at all. He doesn't need any help with that, except an emergency. And they had fire drills, and sometimes even in fire drills, things get knocked over and suddenly the world isn't as he's used to. And so he made this little app with HoloLens, and it only, it's audio only. And so it gives audio cues, because HoloLens is just a computer. It knows, it, you can upload the map of the building, it knows where the safe exits are, and then it uses that spatial mapping to help guide his friend around objects that weren't there before. Everyone needs more Hello Kitty and George Decay holograms. <laughs> I wanted to share a lighthearted example, because there's so many experiments with storytelling going on in mixed reality right now. And you can easily, if you go on YouTube or any of your favorite um, locations for video and, and type in ActionGram or HoloLens or something like that, you'll see tons of examples where companies like Sanrio, who make Hello Kitty, and celebrities like George K really want to experiment. So they're just putting stuff out there and letting people experiment. They've come in and captured themselves as holograms and letting people play with storytelling in new ways. Now, I had no idea how the drones worked with this firefighting example, but thanks to Sarah, I'm completely confident how it all works now. Uh, so this is a, a firefighting unit who are challenged with fighting these massive fire, fire, eh, fires where they can change direction. They're only getting maps every 24 hours, which puts the firefighters at a huge amount of risk. So what they've been doing is they're sending drones out to do real-time mapping, sending the data back real-time to the command center, and the command center the, the captain has a uh, HoloLens on. And so they're seeing a 3D map rendered real-time from the data from the drone so that they can make the right decisions to keep firefighters out of danger. I could go on and on. I have a ton more examples here. I've heard from lots of people in the medical industry that they believe lives are going to be saved this year because of the planning and the surgical prep they're able to do. So all I wanted to do with today is just give you a little grounding in this tech try to convince you this is going to be ubiquitous in the next few years, and just get you excited and inspired. Thank you.